Namaste. So last time we talked about the general philosophy and uh, the reason for making offerings to the Supreme. Now let's take a look at actually how you do it. How do you make a sacred offering to Ganesh? So in this, uh, I'm going to offer some water, achaman, meaning water for washing the mouth, and then some incense, dhupa, then a lamp, deepa, then some flowers, pushpam. And each offering is followed by the mula mantra, which for Ganesh, is Om Gang Ganadi Pataye Namaha. So let's take a look. Idang Achamaniam. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Esha Dupaha Om Gang Ganapataye Namaha Esha Deepaha Om Gang Ganapataye Namaha Etat Pushbang Om Gam Ganadi Pataye Namaha So that went by kind of quickly, didn't it? Let me explain a little more about what I'm doing here. First, I'm taking three drops from the Achamaniya Patra and washing my hand. Then I'm taking three drops and washing the bell. Then I take the bell in my left hand and I start to ring it. As I'm making the other offerings, I'm ringing the bell more or less continuously <laughs> as far as possible. So first comes the incense. Esha Dupaha Om Gan Ganadi Pataye Namaha. And you notice I'm making circles with the incense. I'm offering mentally to his feet three times, three circles, to his waist, three circles, to his head, three circles, and then three circles around the, his entire form. Then I put the incense on the other side and let it burn. Then I offer the lamp, idang dipaha, om gang ganadi pataye namaha. Now, the, this is called the mula mantra or the root mantra, which means this is the mantra that invokes this particular form of the Lord. If you're worshiping a different form, you're going to use a different mula mantra. And you can look it up. There are books on the internet with all this information. 
Uh, use your noggin, huh? Use Google. Google is your friend. Uh, or you can write me, make a comment here or whatever, uh, if you can't find it, and I'll let you know the name of the particular or the mula mantra for the particular deity you want to worship. So then I am offering the flowers. I happen to be on a morning walk after breakfast this morning, and I passed by this lady's garden. She has a really nice garden. <laughs> and she also has a deity of Ganesh outside in front of her house. And I always salute him, you know, as I go by and say one of his names. Like uh, this morning, I think I said uh, uh, Jai Vinayakar. <laughs> Vinayaka is one of his names, means the destroyer of obstacles. So Ganesh Ganapati is the uh, destroyer of all obstacles in the quest for self-realization. And of course, most of those obstacles are internal, <laughs> not external. <laughs> so uh, I always ask him for some help in dealing with those internal obstacles. Anyway, the lady came out and she saw me picking flowers. These blue flowers are Ganesha's favorite little flowers, and they grow wild all over here. So they're very easy to get. But she has these nice flowers, especially these uh, little um, orchids that have a wonderful fragrance. So she was so kind. She, she gave, I told her, I'm doing Pushpa Puja today and uh, flower offering. So uh, she gave me a whole bunch of flowers. <laughs> you see, th this is how it works. People don't understand. Huh? They think that religion is just a ceremony or just a ritual. And I, I guess if you don't have any faith, maybe that's true for you. But as we're talking about in our other series on, on Right View, the world is a reflection of your consciousness not the other way around. So if your consciousness is a space where beauty and love and devotion and ecstasy show up, that's what's going to happen. That's what you're going to experience. Huh? So if you go into even the preparation for sacred offerings with faith and devotion and love, huh, the whole thing becomes ecstatic. The whole universe will cooperate with you. See, like people complain to me, I don't have a job, I don't have any money, I don't have a friend, I don't have a lover, whatever, you know, whatever they think they're missing. Well, all right, change your consciousness. Well, how do I do that? Karma yoga, sacred offerings. If there's some obstacle in your life, worship Vinayakar. Huh? He'll remove them. You'll see. You have to do it. You have to make the experiment. Don't just sit there in your armchair and go, yeah, duh, what's he talking about? Try it. Do it. And follow the instructions. Okay? It, the form is there for a reason. Huh? These thought forms have been cultivated for thousands of years by millions of devotees. So if you participate in them, if you offer your energy into these thought forms, you engage their power. This is part of the machinery, the subtle mechanism of the universe. You have to learn how to use it for your advantage. Why not? Because I'll tell you what, if you misuse it or you fail to use it, you're going to suffer. That's just the way the universe is constructed. I'm sorry. <laughs> It has to be that way. There has to be a structure. There has to be a machine. It has to have different functions. And if you don't know what they are, and you just try with trial and error, it'll be mostly error. So if you make these offerings, these sacred offerings, to whatever form of God you prefer, it almost doesn't matter, you know. But for particular results, you should worship the appropriate form. If you want money, worship Lakshmi. 
or Ganesh. Ganesh also gives money. Uh, actually, any form will give money or support or whatever you need uh, because they're all pure Brahman. Brahman is everything, everywhere. Huh? And all the avatars, all the forms of God are pure self-realized Brahman. Huh? They don't have to go through any yoga process. That's for us, us poor deluded jivas who have got caught up in samsara. Now we have to get out. But how do we pay for our ticket? These offerings. I'm telling you, I did this seva, bhakti seva, or actually karma yoga seva, for like 35 years, faithfully, every day. And then one day, I graduated, and boom, this whole new realm opened up to me of direct experience of the spiritual energy. I'm an ordinary person. I don't have any special qualifications or anything, except I followed the instructions of my guru. I took him very seriously. I took him at his word. And by following those instructions, I got so many blessings. You can too, huh? because it's not anything special to do with me. It's because I followed the structure of the universe, which is that certain forms, certain names, certain rites and rituals produce specific results, certain mantras. Huh? When you chant these mantras and you offer these things to your God, you will get ecstasy, huh? as long as your mind isn't too much in the way. You will feel it immediately. Or just preparing for it, just making the ingredients or making the paraphernalia ready. You'll see. You have to do it, though. Don't just watch the video and go, yeah, looks cool, you know. <laughs> That's dumb. Why? Because you're missing a huge opportunity to transform your life for the better. Now, in the next few episodes of this series, we'll go over offering different things until we get to the, the climax of the thing, which will be the uh, sandalwood paste offering. <laughs> so, enjoy. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.